welcome back to Neil the Real Deal's YouTube channel. Today we're talking about towing, so realistic towing with the Chevy EV Silverado RST model. And our test journey today is traveling from Los Angeles to Salt Lake City, Utah. Now that we're in Las Vegas and heading to Salt Lake, we're going to start recording some data points and showing you guys kind of what the reality is of towing with an EV truck. Towing the trailer, we're getting about seven kilowatt miles per kilowatt hour. That's doing a lot of climbing and everything between Los Angeles and Las Vegas. It's not very good, but we're making that calculation to see how far we can get to the next charger. The trailer that we're towing is about a 3,500 pound trailer. It's pretty big and, and bulky, so we're getting a fair amount of wind resistance. We're plugging along and gonna see kind of how we do today. Let's start the journey here. So as of now, the, tra the truck is telling us we have 127 miles of range. We're trying to get to Mesquite to our next charger. We only have 63% charge right now because the last fast charger we were at was not charging quickly. That's been an overall theme that we've come across a couple of times is the fast chargers. It's nothing with the truck. The truck is great. It's the supposed hyper fast chargers that aren't charging hyper fast. So that's a huge problem, but there always seems to be an issue of the temperature or something like that that's causing problems with that. So we ran into that a few times already and that puts a big hindrance on the charging. Right now in Las Vegas area, it's 109 degrees. The truck handles it fine, it's the charging stations. We'll continue on and see how far we go and how long it takes us to get back to Salt Lake, how many stops it is. But uh, again, right now we're at 62% charge and uh, see if we can make it a longer way. So see how it goes. The status update, we have left Mesquite, Nevada after our original charge in Las Vegas, which was a debacle. And then we went to another debacle in Mesquite. Towing the trailer, we're still getting, we think, around 0.7 miles per kilowatt hour. It's not as bad like in that last stretch that we had that was a little bit flatter. Now we're heading towards St. George, which is a big climb and uh, we expect it to be probably close to that range. The technology on the truck side of being able to charge at 350 kilowatts is great and it works perfect. I don't see any problems on the truck side, but the tech side on the infrastructure is terrible. We got to this charger that we were, that we were supposed to be at in Mesquite and we got there, it wasn't working. We reset the charger. We were getting slow speeds. So we left and we're like, hey, I've got a Tesla uh, adapter. Let's go over to the Tesla station and see if we can do that. Got my app going, all that. I told it that it was a Chevy Silverado and it was like, no, nope, can't charge here. And then I was like, hey, I'll tell it I'm a different vehicle. It's not gonna know the difference. So I told it, it was uh, that we were in a Ford and it was gonna let us do it, but I connected it with the adapter into the truck. The truck recognized the connection and my app said that Tesla did not recognize that the uh, charger was connected to my truck. There was another truck next to us, a Ford, and he said that he has been able to charge with the Tesla trucks in the past, but that he had the same issue, that it wouldn't connect to his truck. So we'll try that again at some point, but that did not work for this particular attempt. We return back to the original Electrify America station. We get there, nobody else is there. We plug into the hyper fast charger instead of trying the slower one that we thought might be able to be kind of mid range, but we recharge back into the fast one and bam, it started charging at 350 kilowatts, which was like a huge deal. It's literally 112 degrees out right now. So we're sweating like crazy, you know, obviously tired and kind of frustrated about the whole journey, but it's, you know, it's going full speed. So we go into the store to cool down and we come out. The guy with the truck that was there before is now back there charging and it's now messed up our charging and put our station down to like 30 kilowatts which is you know basically what i get at my house maybe a little bit more that totally messed our charging up we had a bunch of debacles back and forth trying to figure that out until eventually we restarted ours and then i shut it off and it jumped all the way up to like 270 which was pretty much max for the percentage that we were at we were around 50 or 55 something like that it got back up to charging really fast and we charged as fast as we could to about 80%, 83%, I think, when we left. And here we are, we've got 145 miles of range according to the truck. So here's a whole other topic. So the Google Maps estimate, we don't believe reconciles well with what the truck sees in its range. 
it doesn't autocorrect fast enough understanding historically what your miles per kilowatt hour is based on you know the tow load. Google is more optimistic on your screen and then this is less optimistic and it doesn't look like they're coinciding when you're towing uh, nearly as well. It seemed to be quite a bit better when I wasn't towing uh, as I recollect. So anyway, that's something we're gonna see if, how far we can get. We think we can get to Cedar City based on our calculations. We're gonna head to this climb up here. You can see the mountain range and uh, go from there. So that's kind of the whole story and what real life is like charging with this. If Chevy can get the contract signed with Tesla, then they'll be in much better shape because they have the 250 kilowatt chargers and that's plenty fast to kind of get you going and get you charged you know, fast enough. As far as charging frequently as someone that's towing on the Electrify America infrastructure, it's not, it's just not feasible. There's way too many stops that you have to make and, and the planning, and then when they don't work, it's a total debacle. If they work, that would be one thing, but when they're not working and you get the, sh the cut in mileage for how far you can go, it's just, it's not doable. We've learned that lesson, but that's why we're doing this, is we wanted to try it out and suffer the consequences so you don't have to, but that's kind of where we're at now. So we'll check back in with you in a little bit. All right, we got Grambino in the driver's seat, so I'm gonna do a quick example of the mileage differential that we mentioned before. Right now in the driver display on the bottom left corner, it shows 110 miles of range, uh, and then it shows the destination as 48 miles away from here. The point is the difference between the mileage on those two is currently 62 miles. So uh, 110 minus 48, 62. And by the time we get there, you'll see that mileage difference will be much thinner. The truck definitely is not calculating the correct mileage of what it is, of what it's supposed to be when we're towing the trailer. It's not properly taking into account the trailer tow pull and the mileage range uh, rate that we're getting with that. We'll do another video of that when we get uh, closer to Beaver. Continuation of topic of the mileage differential. So. We're at our exit here in Beaver, and I'd just like to show, so we have 57 miles uh, to go of range, and we're at our destination, essentially. We've got almost, just under a mile left, so call that a 56 mile differential. So we only lost a few miles compared to what it was showing before, which is way different from our trip that we had between Mesquite and Cedar City, which was way uphill, a big pull on the climb, and we know that the vehicle doesn't calculate the elevation changes and increases and how that takes in our losses. This most recent trip has been very, very accurate because it was very flat in comparison. We only lost a few miles even for towing the trailer. All right, so we're at the charging station in Beaver. We're at the Electrify America station, which I've grown to hate as of today. For once, we've actually got our 350 kilowatt charging speed which makes all the difference in the world right now in two minutes we've gained five percent of charge which is a huge deal in other places like mesquite and in vegas we were getting destroyed with you know anything from 30 kilowatts to to 90 you know not not anything too much above that for the most part the vehicle will calculate how much you need to charge when it's by itself it's best with the trailer but we found it not to be accurate so we're taking our 0.7 miles per kilowatt hour and taking the 205 kilowatt battery and making our calculations based on that to get us to the next station so that's our current projection of what we what we need to do we're going to charge up to where we think we need to go and then that's going to get us to our next stop but we're just pleased to be able to get get the uh, high uh, kilowatt charging speed that we've been wanting. So let's show you the calculation that we're using. And so far it's been fairly accurate, so let me walk you through this. If you can see on the screen, like Neil said, we are using a 0.7 mile per kilowatt hour range here. So as we look at it on the phone, I have it as 1.7 times the amount of miles that you need to go to your next stop. So in this case, we're looking to go to Scipio, Utah, which is 78 miles away. You take that value, and then divide it by the kilowatt hours of the battery in your vehicle. That will tell you the amount of charge in percent that you need to have in order to get to your destination. 
with basically getting to zero in your battery. If you want to add a buffer into that, take that value and add about a 0.2 onto it so that you will give yourself about a 20% buffer to get to your next station, which that's probably when your vehicle is going to tell you when you need to recharge anyways. So that is the calculation that we've been using. It's worked pretty well so far. All right, well, it's 12, 19. Uh, we got home a couple minutes ago, detached the trailer. It was basically a 12 hour journey from Las Vegas to Salt Lake, which is typically a five and a half hour journey. So. Needless to say, I'm a little spent. We did make it home. So stops were the Vegas Charge to start, Mesquite, Cedar City, Scipio, and now we're home. Quite the journey. Truck's amazing. Charging with Electrified America is a nightmare. So that's the summary of everything. So I'm going to get to bed. Thanks for watching.